What is the Rebus project? What is the field? Uh, who are the players? And what is the purpose? The field, Rebus field of study, are freshwater ecosystems, inland waters, especially freshwater fish. The players. It is a European project involving 17 universities and research institutions from six European countries. Belgium, Estonia, Germany, Italy, Sweden, and the United Kingdom. These organizations have created a European training network. The purpose of the game, the goal of the project, is both research and training. The goal is to train 15 researchers 15 young researchers in the language of the project, 15 early stage researchers from now on ESR. For more than a year, Alfredo has been coming here every two or three weeks, with snow in the winter, in sandals in the summer, and in the rain, just like today. He scans the river's 900 meters with his portable antenna, his fish detector. When a fish is within the range of the antenna, it emits a signal that Alfredo reads on his smartphone, allowing the fish to be identified. Every time the antenna rings, we make a note of what fish we have found, where it is today in the river, and at what depth. By now, Alfredo knows the river stone by stone, and he knows some fish individually anticipating where we will probably find them today. As Claudio Comoglio said, this is due to many different factors, but in Ribes we deal with one of these factors in particular, the fragmentation of rivers, and the effect that the fragmentation has on the fish that live in those rivers. In hundreds of years of exploiting rivers, we have profoundly changed them. We have built many structures, barriers, dams, levees, sluices. A research published in Nature surveyed more than one million barriers in European rivers, but the number is certainly underestimated. In most cases, rivers no longer flow freely along the entire length, but are divided into many sections. Today, we are in Istat, in the south of Sweden, on the Baltic Sea. We are meeting Florian Egas. He is a biologist. He works with the University of Karlstadt and the Fiskevars technique. The general idea of his project is in part to study the efficiency of existing fish passes and in another to compare different techniques for monitoring the movement of fish in rivers. We must actively work to free the rivers. Many of the existing barriers on our rivers are no longer in service. There are projects in this direction around the world, like uh, unlocking the Severn or dam removal Europe. Fish need rivers, not pipes. We must actively engage in increasing the share of energy produced from renewable sources. Today, the most exploited renewable sources in Europe are wind and uh, hydroelectric. Today, we are going to the Predosa hatchery, together with Usama Ashraf and his supervisor, Costantino Manes. Usama is working at the Politecnico di Torino for Ribes. His research work is focused on studying the swimming performance of the freshwater fish. When designing a ladder for humans, the height and length of the steps must be proportionate to the size of human beings. Similarly, to design a fish passage, we need to know which fish species will be using it. The problem is that we often don't know the swimming abilities of fish, especially those that are of no economic significance. It's a matter of bridges. What do you think, Professor Marion, about the difficulties of the specific languages of the different disciplines? Uh, when I was a, a student, when I graduated, uh, science was a bit like a uh, bubble, you know, the biblical uh, tower that was built. People came from all over the world to build a tower, but they couldn't speak to each other because they had different languages. 
Well, science was a bit like that. When the environmental problems appeared, everybody realized that we needed to aggregate competences from different areas, but science was Babel in the sense that it was extremely difficult for engineers, physicists, uh, to talk with biologists, ecologists. Uh. Gloria has done various experiments, first introducing one fish into the channel, then two fish, then groups of fish, and has observed their behavior in the different water flow conditions. In reality, she didn't actually observe their behavior directly. Instead, she filmed the experiments and then studied the behavior of the fish in the videos. It is here that she relied on artificial intelligence, so that she could analyze the many videos and acquire statistically relevant data. And it's a long life. An eel can live for up to 50 years in one place. Myths and legends tell of eels living to a hundred or more. When an eel is denied a way to achieve its main purpose in life, procreation, it seems able to live forever. As thou, it could wait until the end of time. What triggered this decision, we may never know. When we build a fish passage, how do we tell the fish which direction to take? Research shows that fish generally follow the main flow when migrating downstream. And in hydroelectric plants, the main flow usually goes through the turbines. How do we guide the fish to the fish passage? What kind of road signals should we use? Velizara's work focuses exactly on this signals based on fish behavior, behavioral cues for fish. What do you think when you think of a river? An ecosystem or a water pipeline, a natural aqueduct? What do you see when you look at a river? Water flowing or even moving sediments? Sand, gravel, stones, algae, aquatic plants, fungi, bacteria, microorganisms, mollusks, insects, amphibians, mammals, fish. When we intervene to modify a river, we are modifying all of this. James is a biologist. He works for Ribes in Berlin for the Leibniz Institute of Freshwater Ecology and Inland Fisheries and the Free University of Berlin. His research deals with how artificial light affects the behavior of migratory fish at night. The lights under bridges, those of dams, streets and cities, can all attract some fish, such as salmon, and therefore slow down their migration and increase the risk of being preyed upon. The lights may also scare away other animals, such as eels, acting as a barrier. Like fish in troubled water. So... <laughs> so we have come to the end. When we asked Miriam Castagna what was the most exciting thing for her during Ribes, she answered, the research itself. Taste of researching, starting in one direction, imagining a path and building it a little at a time, facing obstacles and unexpected events. A blend of intellectual work and practical work, of imagination and fantasy, of enthusiasm, frustration, fear 
and pride. That's it. That's it.